everybody. Happy Founders Day 2021. We know today's event looks a little different because it's online, but we still hope that it's going to bring the sense of community that Founders Day usually brings to you, even in these trying times. Although it's been a really hard year, we have found lots of ways to make our Cheatham's community as wonderful as ever. And it's really nice to be back in the building. As much as interacting with one another has been lovely, even over the lockdowns, we were able to branch out to the wider community and share our Cheatham's life with everybody else. Everyone has handled this past year with such grace and we are so proud to call ourselves members of this school community. The respect that has been shown throughout this time to both students, teachers and the rest of the members of the school community will not be forgotten anytime soon and is appreciated by everybody. We want to encourage everyone to keep being as kind, generous and considerate as they have been so far so that we can welcome the summer term with open arms. We both think it's safe to say that this past year has not been what any of us have expected but it's still amazing to see how much we've all taken these challenges on board and how much we've all grown and learned from these experiences. Getting back to normality at school for the second time round has been wonderful and perhaps next year this day will be able to be celebrated in person at the cathedral as usual. Thank you. Thank you Lillian and Izzy and thank you too to our organists Joel and Alex. Well, they say that lightning never strikes twice, and yet here we are for the second Founders' Day in a row, not in Manchester Cathedral. Welcome to Founders' Day 2021, our very first online Founders' Day. We felt that this year it was particularly important that we continued this tradition after having to cancel it completely in 2020 in the early throes of the coronavirus pandemic. This year marks the 600th anniversary of the Royal Charter that was signed by Henry V that led to our site, our campus, being constructed here in the medieval quarter of Manchester. And it's important that we don't forget these traditions, which is why I'm incredibly grateful the chair of our FEFES, Paul Lee, is going to read the traditional vote of thanks. I'm very pleased to be able to deliver the speech and commemoration of our founders this year in particular, because in this year we have seen so many examples, so many inspiring examples of selflessness, generosity and service. And it is those characteristics that we honour and respect in the commemoration speech. A speech that's been made for decades, if not centuries. Let us now commemorate our benefactors, who, from zeal of, for God's glory and in the spirit of love, have contributed of their substance to the foundation and maintenance of the charity. In the year of our Lord, 1651, Humphrey Cheatham Esquire of Clayton in the county of Lancashire bequeathed the sum of £1,700 of good and lawful money of England for the purchase of lands with the intent that the whole clear profit issues, benefits and revenues thereof, and thereby to be raised and received, should, to the pleasure of Almighty God, be ordered, disposed of, employed and converted from time to time forever, in, for and about, the relief, maintenance, education, bringing up and binding apprentice or other preferment of 40 poor boys or male children, he also bequeathed a sum of £500 for the purchase of some fitting and convenient house or houses in Manchester or Salford as an hospital for the habitation of the said 40 boys, their governor, officers and servants, successively forever to the pleasure of Almighty God. And he expressed his desire that the great house with the buildings, outhouses, courts, yards, gardens and appurtenances in Manchester aforesaid, called the College or the College House, should be purchased and bought for the same service. He bequeathed a further sum of a thousand pounds to be expended in the purchase of books as a foundation of a library for the use of scholars and others well affected to resort unto 
in some convenient place or part of the said college or college house in Manchester. And along with the said Humphrey Cheatham, our founder and chief benefactor, let us also remember Benjamin Nichols, one time Mayor of Manchester, founder of Nichols Hospital, now joined to this charity, and of all of those who have at any time given of their substance during their lives or bequeathed of the same after their decease for the glory of God and the benefit of this charity. Let us especially recall the many old boys and former pupils of this school who, remembering the benefits they have received, have made generous benefactions for pupils who were to follow them. For these and all other benefactors, let us render to Almighty God our hearty thanks, beseeching him to grant that, as these his servants for their time bestowed charitably of the worldly goods entrusted to them, so we for our time may faithfully use the same to his honour and glory, that we, with them, may appear before his presence in eternal blessedness, for his sake, who died for us, rose again, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. Being together like this gives us the opportunity to say thank you to all of the people that have kept our school alive in the last year. Everybody from our domestic services team, our maintenance team and sites team, through to our pastoral team, teaching staff, the medical centre, and to our Stoller Hall and library for keeping the cultural and creative pursuits still at the forefront of our school. We've also been incredibly touched by the generosity that we've received as a whole organisation over this very strange time, both financial support and also gifts of time and expertise, particularly in the world of music where alumni and friends of the school have given so generously their time to encourage, inspire and motivate our students at a time when so many young musicians have found it difficult to keep that motivation, to keep that spark alive. Now, it seemed fitting that our guest speaker this year should be a man who has given so much to the musical and cultural life of this city. And I'm absolutely delighted to introduce the music director of the Halle Orchestra, Sir Mark Elder. Hello, everybody. Tom has asked me to say a few words to contribute to this very important day for Chets. Ever since I've been in Manchester, I've found a great affection for Chets. This has come for two reasons. When I was very young, after the war, my great uncle was the organist of Manchester Cathedral. His name was Norman Cocker. And that, for organists, is still a very famous name because he wrote a piece that is played all over the world, his tuba tune. But much more significantly, Norman wrote music for you all, for the choir at Jets, different pieces, songs and services. And the strange thing for me is that I should find myself so completely committed to the musical life of this great city. But I never met my great uncle. He was a great personality, you know, Norman. He used to do weekly organ recitals in the town hall, in that amazing pictured hall, painted walls, that some of you may have seen. And he was a great character. He loved cinema organs. And so obviously some musical genes have been passed on to me, but it's strange that I've landed up making music like he did in this city. But it gives me a sense of belonging. It gives me a sense that there's a job to do here. And I've been looking after the Halle, as perhaps you know, for 20 years, which is a long time for one conductor to look after an orchestra. But I have adored it. I've loved it and I have great affection and admiration for the orchestra. You see, I think the musical life of this city is very, very important for the whole country. There has always been a sense of musical life here. 1777, I think, if I remember this right, was the first time that any amateur musicians got together in Manchester to make music together. And by an extraordinary quirk of fate, you know, that was on the, on the spot where the Midland Hotel is now. And gradually music took hold of this city, 
particularly at the time in the middle of the 19th century when the German pianist Karl Haller, Charles Halle, came to Manchester and founded the orchestra. So you now, working here at this famous school that tries to do something for a general education as well as a specific musical specialisation, are part of an ongoing musical life in this city that is very, very distinguished, goes back a long way and must always be allowed to continue. I'm so aware that the recent months, now years of course, of the Covid problem has meant that your musical life has been curtailed, has been repressed, compressed in a way that nobody 18 months ago thought possible. And I think it's important not to lose sight of the fact that we will come out of this terrible period. We will all find a normality. It may not be the same as it was two years ago, but we will get back to a rhythm in which your musical development will play its part. And I beg you all to keep practicing, to keep believing in your own musical talent. Never doubt it. You wouldn't be there at Chet's if you didn't have it. I remember when I was early in Manchester 20 years ago, I came and did a concert with the big orchestra as it was then. And we did a wonderful piece, Mahler's Sixth Symphony, which I'd never conducted before. And obviously nobody in the orchestra had played it before. And it seemed like a dangerous thing to have done. But I shall never forget it. It was a wonderful experience getting to know the young musicians at Chet's at the time and realising that talent is there inside us all. What must be developed and what must be believed in is artistry. Difficult to talk about, isn't it? You can practice your scales and do all your concertos and still not be sufficiently artistic. But working with the young musicians all those years ago, I loved it. I loved the feeling that we were exploring new territory and that I was just asking things from these young players that they'd never had asked of them before. And I think that's wonderful and I must do it again soon, as soon as I can find time in my, my diary. But a Founders Day is a, is a great moment to celebrate and think about why the school is there. What does it believe in? What does it stand for? And to not lose sight of the fact that, that the development of a creative artistic talent is a process that goes on and on and must never stop. Every year I go on learning new things, as I know you will. And I just wanted to voice on behalf of your, you all, your families, and everybody concerned with Chets, I wanted to voice the thought that we mustn't lose sight of the long term. It's horrible at the moment. It's incredibly unfortunate and very, very painful to lose relatives, to have friends who've been made ill by this incredible virus. And we all believe, don't we, that the vaccinations in the end will help us to control it. But I hope music will always play a part in your lives. I hope that you won't lose your love for it, your belief in it, whether you're a player or a singer. I was both, and I know how beautiful and thrilling it can be and how important it is to keep working at it and not to lose heart difficult you might say well easy for you to say but I've lost a lot in these last 18 months too we all have and we've got to go on believing that something good will come out of it so many congratulations to Chets to celebrate yet another Founders Day and my very best wishes to everybody in the school teachers and pupils alike that the next year will be an even more positive one